If you're looking to get your hands on a book that's got more action and adventure than anything you've read before, something that contends with the Marvel superheroes, well, stick with me because we're about to look into something that is supernatural. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Wayne, and you're listening to my podcast. And today we're going to talk about a book that has got more action and adventure in it than anything you've ever read before. And if you haven't figured it out yet, that book, my friends, is the Bible. Now, if you're new to the Bible, perhaps you haven't read the Bible, or perhaps you're reading the Bible in a way that kind of tones down the action and adventure pieces, I want to let you know that the Bible, it's rich with supernatural elements and miracles that underscore the divine nature of God. However, when we engage with the Bible in small, isolated chunks, or we focus exclusively on isolated verses, it becomes very easy to overlook the broader context and the overarching supernatural themes that are woven throughout the scriptures. Now, this tendency to consume the Bible piecemeal can lead to a limited and sometimes superficial understanding of all the supernatural aspects that God is trying to show us. Now, if you're like me and you can remember back to a bunch of the churches that you've been in and many other religious traditions, especially during weekly sermons or maybe your own personal devotion, well, we study verses a lot of times and the verses are often chosen for their relevance to specific themes or topics or lessons that the pastor is going to go through that particular week. And while this approach has merits, and it's very important to go verse by verse through the Bible so you can understand how rich it is. It can inadvertently diminish all the interconnectedness of these supernatural events that are found in the Bible, and each isolated verse or story can lose its significance when divorced from the broader narrative that showcases the power and the majesty of God. And there's no easier way to let you know just how supernatural the Bible is than to just list and go through a few of the stories. So here we go. Of course, we're going to start off in Genesis 1 with the creation of the world. And in the book of Genesis, God creates the world and all the living things in only six days, showcasing his divine power. Now, next up, you may remember the story of the great flood. This is Noah's ark story in which God sends a flood to wipe out humanity and save Noah, his family, and two of every animal species. Next up, the burning bush. God appeared to Moses in a burning bush, giving him the command to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. The Ten Plagues. God sent ten plagues on Egypt, including turning the Nile to blood, sending frogs and locusts, and causing darkness all to free the Israelites. Now that's only the first four. So let's look at another story. For instance, the well-known story of the parting of the Red Sea in the book of Exodus. Well, that's a powerful testament to God's intervention in human affairs. Now, when encountered in isolation, it may be seen as a remarkable event in history. However, when considered within the larger context of the Israelites' liberation from slavery, their miraculous journey through the wilderness, and God's guidance throughout, it becomes even part of a grand supernatural tapestry. And by focusing solely on isolated verses, we risk missing the grand narrative that demonstrates the divine's constant presence and involvement in the lives of his people. All right, let's go through a few more, and I'm sure most of these you're going to know of, but there's a couple that are smaller miracles you may not have heard of. Of course, we have the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus' crucifixion and his subsequent resurrection are central to the Christian faith, showcasing the supernatural power of God. The virgin birth, the birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary, a miraculous conception through the Holy Spirit. Walking on water. Jesus walking on the Sea of Galilee, demonstrating his power over nature. The Transfiguration. Jesus' appearance was transformed, and he spoke with Moses and Elijah in the presence of Peter, James, and John. How about a whole book for you? The Book of Revelation. Now, this entire book is filled with apocalyptic and supernatural imagery, including visions of the end times, angels, and supernatural battles. The floating axe head in 2 Kings 6, where Elijah made an iron axe head float on the water after it had fallen into the Jordan River. Now let's spend a minute on the healings listed in the Bible. We've got the healing of the woman with the issues of blood in Mark 5. This is a story of a woman who had been suffering from a continuous flow of blood for 12 years. She simply touched the cloak of Jesus and was immediately healed. The healing of the blind man at Bethsidia in Mark 8. Jesus healed the blind man in two stages, first making him see partially and then fully, which was showcasing his healing abilities. 
the healing of the ten lepers in Luke 17. If you recall, this is the story where Jesus healed ten lepers at once, but only one of them, a Samaritan, returned to give thanks. And how about the cursing of the barren fig tree in Mark 11? This is where Jesus cursed a barren fig tree and it withered immediately, demonstrating the power of Jesus' words. You know, to truly appreciate the supernatural aspect of the Bible, one should also engage with it on a larger scale, reading entire chapters and books, and of course the entire Bible itself, because this approach is going to help connect the dots between individual miracles and events, allowing all of us to grasp the overarching themes of faith, redemption, and divine intervention. While isolated verses can offer valuable insight and guidance, they are most potent when considered with the context of the Bible's grand narrative, reminding us of the remarkable supernatural presence that pervades every single page of the Bible. So let's list a few more. The sun stands still in Joshua 10. Joshua prayed for the sun to stand still during a battle, and it happened, allowing the Israelites to defeat their enemies. The healing of the man born blind in John 9. Jesus healed a man who was born blind by making mud with his saliva and applying it to the man's eyes. The widow's oil multiplying in 2 Kings 4, where Elijah helped a widow by miraculously multiplying her jar of oil to help her pay off her debts. The healing of the crippled beggar at the gate beautiful in Acts 3. This is where Peter and John healed a man who had been lame from birth, allowing him to walk for the very first time. And if all of those weren't supernatural enough, how about the talking donkey of Balaam in Numbers 22? This is where God enabled a donkey to speak to Balaam, warning him of the angel in his path. And speaking of angels, you know, in the Bible, angels, we all know, are spiritual beings that were created by God to serve different various roles and functions in the heavenly realm and here on earth. Angels are often depicted as messengers and agents of God, and they play a significant role in conveying divine revelations, providing guidance, and executing God's will. They're mentioned both throughout the Old and the New Testaments, and they're an integral part of the Judeo-Christian belief system. All right, we're not done yet. I'm going to name a few more for you. The coin in the fish's mouth in Matthew 17. This is where Jesus instructed Peter to catch a fish and told him that he'd find in the mouth of the fish a coin that he could pay the temple tax. One of the most well-known miracles in the Bible, the resurrection of Lazarus in John 11. Of course, where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead who had been in the tomb for four days. The healing of the Syrophoenician woman's daughter in Mark 7 is where Jesus healed the daughter of a Gentile woman from a distance, demonstrating his compassion for all people. And then you've got the healing of the paralyzed man at the pool of Bethesda in John 5. Now, Jesus healed a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years with a simple command to pick up his mat and walk. We mentioned a minute ago angels and archangels, and there's also the seraphim, which are a specific class of angels that are mentioned in the Bible, particularly back in the book of Isaiah. Now, these angels are described as beings with six wings who stand in the presence of God, and they continuously praise him by declaring his holiness, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. This can be found back in Isaiah 6.3. And from what we read, the seraphim's primary role is to worship and exalt God, emphasizing his transcendent holiness and his majesty. Not to be left out, the Bible also mentions a few other types of angels, including the cherubim, who are often associated with guarding sacred spaces and knowledge. And then we've got the archangels like Matthew and Gabriel, who are recognized for their unique roles, such as being warriors and messengers. You know, there are so many supernatural things about the Bible that... I'd have to ramble on, I would think, for hours just to list most of them. (laughs) This is important because we've got to remember that the supernatural aspect of the Bible and faith are really integral and awe-inspiring dimensions of Christianity. The Bible embodies extraordinary encounters and miracles and divine interventions that have shaped the sacred text and the collective consciousness of countless believers. You know, the richness of the supernatural in the Bible really serves as a profound testament to the limitless power of God, His unfailing love for us, and His enduring presence in the lives of His creation. All of these supernatural elements not only ignite spiritual wonder, but also provide strength and hope and guidance to those who seek faith. 
You know, I look back and as I list some of these, all of them are so supernatural. If you believe one of them or a few of them, but you doubt some of the other ones, I'd say at this point, why are you doubting them? If you believe one of them, you might as well just believe all of them. That's what faith is all about. You know, all these stories remind us that our understanding of the world is not limited to just the physical realm, but it needs to extend into the profound and the mysterious dimension of the divine. The supernatural aspects of the Bible and faith offer a deeper connection, helping individuals to navigate the complexities of life with a sense of purpose, solace, and the assurance of a loving and omnipotent creator. Well, that's it, my friends. I know this isn't an incredibly long one, but it's something that just came to my mind that I just wanted to kind of record and throw out to you. Just remember, it's supernatural. supernatural. So thanks once again for spending some time with me here on my Christian Observations podcast. All I can say is peace out, Cub Scouts, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for being part of today's episode on My Christian Observations. I genuinely hope that our discussion has not only deepened your understanding of God's Word, but that it's also opened your heart and your eyes to the remarkable role that you play in breathing life into Scripture and igniting transformation into your own life. Always remember that you are an indispensable part of this incredible journey, and together we'll unearth more treasures from the Bible and enrich our lives. Don't forget to visit my website at mychristianobservations.com. There you can click on the freebies link to download free PDF transcriptions of my podcast episodes. And you can click on the newsletter link to get my latest newsletter featuring exciting and new and upcoming podcasts and YouTube channels. Be sure to show your support by hitting that like button, subscribing, and sharing this message with a friend or two that you think could use it. I'm really looking forward to reconnecting with you in just a few days as we'll continue to delve even deeper into the transformative power of God's Word. And until then, stay blessed and be a beacon of light in somebody else's life.